How you guys doing? You guys ready to start? <gasps> no. Uh, we're just mix missing. You're missing me. Yes. Sorry, oh, I screamed the names. I, I remember. Right. I'm trying to figure this out because otherwise, I'm gonna make it halfway through this and I'm just gonna end up having to quit. <laughs> so, I mean, we Quitter. can go ahead and start. I can, I can log in. I just, I'm gonna have to work on this in the background. Is your computer listed up, Paul? Cool. Well, my friends, let's I'm start. Well, I can't this. understand fart mouth. Who's fart mouth? Am I fart mouth or is he fart mouth? Is no, he no, fart no. mouth? I can't. I can't understand Paul. He's making all these gestures. Uh, oh, with was... his mouth. Oh, I there it doing. is. I didn't. I didn't know if. Um, <laughs> I don't know how long my computer's gonna last. <laughs> okay, we might lose two people, and it just might be three. Try, try okay. not to spill your food on your computer. It'll last yeah. longer. <laughs> yep. All right, everybody, roll a d twenty. Let's start it off. Roll them d twenty. That's twenty. Natural 20? Mm-hmm. 10. Okay. <laughs> 13. 16. I'm doing mine in-game. <laughs> uh, so, Mara with the three. What <laughs> happened last time? <laughs> <laughs> I remember a well. Um, some goblins, some uh, some about a shield, and okay. uh, like a half orc, maybe a quarter orc. Some someone who is some amount of orc. Yeah. Uh, that is right. kind of a blur dog. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna go left one and go to the Benihana or Gary. We're gonna Gary. go full circle. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? What else happened? What Give happened us a small bit of information. We saw some invisible dude steal the relic or whatever it was called from the goblins. And while Malshk. 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 It's male. And, uh, like you read male. Yeah, yeah, it's Malshk. Um, <laughs> Bolshk. And uh, the. I don't know what, what Morrow was doing, but uh, Bird Person looking, and I. He was looking at the well the whole time. <laughs> yeah, the Bird Person and I went after the hooded figure who put us to sleep in the woods. And then I don't remember much after that. All right, we're going on this above me, Steven. I've had. Let's go with Malsk. Malsk. God Drank. <laughs> Malesk. Malesk, what else happened? Of things that happened? Well, mm -hmm. uh, it actually started off with everybody seeing a public display in the center of town uh, with some black robed gentlemen uh, executing a few uh, heretic or uh, displeasers. Uh, we then heard of a kind of a bounty thing of that relic in the middle of the woods. We all traveled there, uh, found out that it had been inhabited by goblins. We cleansed the place of the goblins. Uh, we were able to meet with a very jovial uh, demon of sorts who uh, had a musical instrument and decided to talk to us for a little while uh, after we had done such. All right. Um, Frank, do you have anything else to add? Frank. All right. Let's see here. Uh, <laughs> Mouse got one goblin kill. Frank got a goblin kill. Gary got a goblin kill. Uh, Tuck Tuck killed the goblin mage. Males killed the goblin, and Frank killed the hobgoblin. Just so you know, everyone's keeping count. That is a uh, Frank <laughs> up. Frank up for two. Steven up with two. Or sorry. Males cup with two. Males cup with two. We're tied. Uh we Rivals. did we did find some sort of dancing fairy like creature uh in, in a barn 
and they gave us a uh, some magic artifacts that we can play around with. Uh, and okay. now, now we're going to try and burn down the place to fulfill the contract that we found, which said, uh, not inside the tower, we have to find the artifact, we have to kill everyone there, burn it down, and then meet at the Tower of the Eye of the Moon Cult. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> All right, Tuk Tuk, anything else? I think they've got a lot of it. Anything, small little details you want to include? It was a tiefling, not a fair. It was a tiefling bard, yes, he was playing the loop. Um, to... We were told by the tiefling to go to Zale and find an ice wizard with a large hat whose name started with a T in order to find out more about these relics. Um, specifically, I believe the Shield of Adjuration was, uh, was one of them. Um, and we, we were told, or we found a... Um, or I was given a a, a a scroll after I chased the uh, half the half orc, right? The half orc yes. was the was the one that had the shield and whatnot. After I chased him for ever, and he got really pissed off at me, um, he put me to sleep along with uh, uh, Carl. And <laughs> Carl. <laughs> and. Uh, Basically, the I believe the scroll said sacred weapon destroyed, shards not to be gathered except by a single person. Something along those lines. <laughs> sacred weapon destroyed, silvers were hidden, or slivers were hidden. That's what finding them was forbidden except for one human or something like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. That was the bard's little um. What'd you call it? Um, Mail quote. A bard's tale. His little ditty. His, his, his little soul. ditty. Well, his strong snapple. All right. Well, well played, my fellow friends. We will take up our adventure as you guys are in the barn area of this stronghold. The five of you have gathered together, talked about all this information, and exchanged it between each other, and it's about. One o'clock in the morning, you guys left around dusk, and it's been a while since the fight, and you were feeling a little bit hurt, some of you. Some of you are quite okay. Some of you are very hydrated in the well you've been by all night, and I will let you guys take it there. What would you like to do for the rest of the night? You have about a five-hour travel back to Shoria at this time. All right. Well, That's uh, objective one off the list. Of truth or dare time to uh, burn it down. As we have cleansed the place, it is time to reset it and bring exactly. balance back to this area. Of course. Alright. Can Frunk do like a perception check to see if he finds anything that's like an accelerant or some sort of fire starter? Yeah, go ahead. Make a perception check, my good friend. I think I have stuff in my pouch that does that. That's a fire starter. Yes, Maybe. you have Tinder. You have a Tinder box, I believe. There was also a well-stocked bar with a lot of alcohol that they yeah. were drinking. True. Twelve plus my perception is wisdom. So plus two. So fourteen. I'm looking for like gasoline or whatever it would be in that time, like an accelerant. Okay. Um, I would say you find the alcohol, as Mills has pointed out. You also notice there is some hay in the barn with all the horses and the cart that you could use. That's basically about it. You find the fireplace in the room where you had the big fight with the fire still kind of embers kind of crackling. And that's about all you have right now. Cool. Wasn't the cart magical? It was just a regular cart with two horses attached to it. Okay. I thought it was an illusion. Wasn't it? Oh, that—that that was yeah. the one outside of it. The one yeah. inside is the one. So yeah, we're definitely yes. taking these horses in the cart, and that's how we're gonna leave. But we gotta set the place on fire first. Okay, go ahead. So Frank uh, wants to take the horses and use them as accelerant. No. <laughs> use a cart. <laughs> no, no, not the right. cart either. So we can all I, ride on the uh, cart. Not the hay. I—I asked—I asked for volunteers to try and get things together, and we start from the bar, and we just kind of spread 
things out and try and light it up to the best of my ability. I take alcohol from the bar and I pour it on the hay, and then I start distributing the hay in mm -hmm. multiple rooms. Okay, I would say after like a good amount of time, you got as you get the cart and the horses out of this barn, and you're out sitting outside the stronghold, you notice like the small amber embers of flame start flickering out through the windows. The smoke is starting to go in the barn. It's all white smoke at first, like, and the other rooms are starting to go. You notice the room you had the bed battle is having small explosions of alcohol exploding, and it's it's slowly catching on fire. Awesome. Cool. Let's get out of here. Frank is ready yeah. for bed. <laughs> all right. You guys want to start heading back or what? Well, where where do we want to go? We could go to the city of Zale or back to Shoria. It's also one o'clock in the morning right now. Almost two o'clock after you lit the whole place on fire. You're well, able to take a short rest. You can take a long rest. It's up to you guys. You can set up camp for the night. Right next to the fire. I yeah. look up. This is not the place to sleep after we've started such a distracting fire. Okay. <laughs> But it's a campfire. <laughs> it's a little more than a campfire. <laughs> <laughs> the repeating bird just sitting there. Fire! Fire! <laughs> we can't stop here. It's bat country. Okay. Well, um, how, how far is Zale compared to our trip to Shoria? Zale is probably almost three weeks away. It's in the <laughs> middle of the country. Okay, it didn't, it didn't look that much further than Shoria on the map, so I just... Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess scale I is okay. Made it look, it's scaled. It's it's far away. Okay. It's like a, it's probably two weeks travel away, but okay. Zale is probably six to four to six hours away, depending how well you do. Okay. I'm cool with taking what we have and hopping a few miles away and then setting up camp. Okay. And um, yeah, a little that's bit. fine. We can uh, sleep in shifts if we take the cart. Exactly. We can do that. Yeah. So let um, us let's go back to Shoria. Yeah. You want we'll, to we'll, head we'll head yeah, back to Shoria now? We'll head back to Shoria. We can sleep in shifts on the cart on the way there. Okay. Um, who's going to take the first shift? Uh, who's sleeping and who's staying awake? I will stay sleeping. awake for the first shift. Uh, Moira, you're going to stay awake well? I'll no, stay sleeping. awake as well. Okay. All right. So, sleeping. Uh, so you two, give me a perception check. I can. Can somebody tell me what my perception is? Because I'm going to have to RP until I get all of this shit sorted out. You're not male, you are Gary. Gary, your perception. I'm pretty sure it's a negative one, I think. <laughs> perception is negative one. Yep. Uh, after modifier, mine is six. Three. Yes. So six and a three. Uh. uh Frunk is also awake <laughs> to try Frunk and help. Frunk is awake too. Yeah, he he's not sleeping. So the only Tuck Tuck and Maru are sleeping. Yeah. Okay. Well, these two are doing their checks right now, and it seems clear. Like there's nobody here. It's a great path. <laughs> Frunk rolled a fifteen. Um. Uh, okay. You notice toward where are you guys both you sitting up front yes Who, where are you guys sitting in this cart i'm sitting on the left hand side holding the reins of okay uh, i'm walking behind it as my stride is probably the same as a horse okay all right um <laughs> frunk you notice to your right in the woods a shadow come go darting by it's not on the ground it's more of like you're in a thick foot wood area and above you you notice like a shadow kind of jumping between the trees okay Tuck Tuck, I believe I have found a friend of yours. I think Tuck Tuck's asleep. <laughs> I do not know this, to my knowledge. <laughs> yes, you can see he's a... Tuck Tuck and Maro are both asleep. Mm -hmm. I tap Tuck Tuck and I go, I think I found a friend of yours. There's some bird like creature in the trees. Do you know when to say I... hello? <laughs> uh, I just squawk at, at uh, Frunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, Maelsh, let me give you a let's get an animal handling skill check to see if you can actually handle this cart well in the forest area. Uh oh. Blues. What kind of animal is it? Uh, thirteen. Okay. Yeah, you're you're controlling it well. There's a small little path through here, so you're able to control it well and get through 
this thick wooded area. Um, Mara, are you still asleep after you hear Frank yelling? Um, probably not. Okay, so all of you guys are awake at this time due to Frank yelling and the squawking of Tuck Tuck the bird. And you keep going along. As you get closer to the edge of the forest, you're probably a little further out, and you can see in your distance, right in front of you, Malsh, in the middle of the road, is a cloaked figure. It is a what? A cloaked, cloaked figure. figure. Just standing um, in the middle of the middle of the pathway. Does this cloaked figure look like the cloaked figure from earlier? Make <sighs> Twenty-three. No, it is not the same figure. He is wearing more of a silver cloak, and the other one had a full cloak that went all the way down. His is more like a half cloak that goes to about to his waist. It's silver, and the inside is this deep, deep black. It almost looks like a shadow is attached to him. And he's got a hood up, and you also notice he is carrying a bow across his back. I will pull back on the reins and tell uh, the horses to slow. How far away is he? He's probably maybe t- 10 feet, not far at all. Yeah, yeah. So I'll pull back and say, hold, friend, watch. And to make the, him warning. Okay. The cloaked figure actually just raises his hand and he says, hail and well met, my friends. Greetings. I am Mel Skyernfist. Who are you to be traveling at these late times? I was merely checking up on you. Why are you checking up on us? I I wasn't maybe checking up on you or maybe someone yet who was following you guys. Have you seen a half orc wizard kind of picture? You have? Perhaps. Make a deception check, Gary. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, you're good at deception, aren't you? <laughs> I get a plus four to deception. Dang. That is a 12. Let's see if you can get this. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I am looking for a half-orc wizard with a dark cloak. Um... He is part of the Eye of the Moon cult. I don't know if you know who this is, but I am trying to stop them. Why do you need to stop them? They are causing a grief, a lot of pain to a lot of people and gathering things that should not be gathered. What are they gathering? The legend. They're gathering for the legend. And why should it not be gathered? You have not heard of the legend? I have not. Frunk comes around at the back of the wagon at this point to go say, Greetings, I'm Frunk. Who are you? Uh, he extends extends his hand and goes, Hello, Frunk. My name is Vakrin. Nice to meet you. Zakrin? Vakrin. V-A-K-R-A-N. Vakrin. And Frunk, as you get close to him, you notice he is a wood elf in character. Very large, slender. You see a bow in his back and two very, very nice swords at his side. Okay. You also notice he has an emblem inside of his cloak of a shadow. Basically, whenever you look inside of his cloak, you get lost. It's more of like a illusional thing that comes over you. And you can't think straight when you look into his cloak. It's like you're falling into a shadow or a black hole. Can I make a history check? Yeah, go ahead. History is intelligence, right? Not wisdom? Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's intelligence. Good ball. Uh, that's an eight. An eight. Um, you. What are you trying to get history on? Whether or not me having been to the Shadow Fell would have seen this symbol at any point in my travels. You know it is a magical item that many people wear from a certain group. Okay. That distinguishes them. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So you guys are 
he kind of looks at all of you and he goes, I suggest you move quickly through these woods or set up a camp. It is not safe to travel. Uh, head to the city of Zale and meet with the water wizard or the ice wizard. He will tell you the legend. I have to go check in with my other compatriots at this time. Yo, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a way we can voice? Because I can't, I can't do the video. My keeps crashing. Okay. I'm good. All right. Is What's there that? a way for us to contact you in the future? I look toward the sh the shadows. If you need our help, find a friend of ours. Are you heading to Shoria right now? Yes, that is our destination. Uh, I have a contact in Shoria that you could reach out to. He uh, often visits the flashy flame, if you know what that is. Ah. The flashy flame? Yes. Uh, Gary and Mario both know this is the tavern that you guys got your first drinks at. Yeah. Um, you'll find Mara him there. A bunch of stuff out of pockets. Yeah. yeah, you'll find him there. His name is Flint. 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 Cool. Uh, I wish you best of luck, and uh, do not let the Eye of the Moon cult win this. Stay strong, my friends. Godspeed. And he, he turns around and just walks away into the woods. Who is the closest Five to him? Frunk and Malish? I need you guys to make a perception check with disadvantage. 12 and then a 3. So, okay. 5. 13 uh, and 11. So, 11. Okay. Never mind. You guys don't notice it. Alright. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, do the rest of us get to roll? No. You no. Got, they, you are the the rest of us? they are the closest no. at, the, at this moment. Oh. Unless anybody else wants to roll with disadvantage, you can't. I mean, I did. Okay, what'd you get? I got, oh, you I got a twenty and a seventeen. <laughs> or no, 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 and a seventeen. A, a seven on the roll, so it would be ten. So I was trying to do math at the same time. This okay, week. okay, no problem. <laughs> um, if Gary, if you guys all want to, you guys are all kind of looking at him as he's walking away. So go ahead. I got a nineteen and a nineteen. <laughs> oh shit, uh, Gary. Yeah, uh, Morrow, you roll with disadvantage. Video. You roll two d20s and add your perception check modifier, and you take the lowest of those two. I guess this is one of those I things don't... where, like, the closer you are, the harder it is to see the details. We kind of have a little further of a step away. Yeah. <laughs> I do have dark vision, though. Yeah. Me too. Did you hear me, Paul? Did we lose him? He's still there, I thought. Is he muted? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh! Uh, he's, Sounds he's like you need a drink, blind. too. It's marrow. Yes. Marrow. <laughs> Maelsk? He's still Maro. on the thing. From. Uh, Alright, we'll see if tuck, he can fix it. Tuck Tuck. Gary. No, it's Tuk Tuk. Okay. Um, so, Tuk Tuk and Gary, tuk -tuk. you do notice... While he's walking away, his arms start moving, and you notice on the inside of his arms, right around here, you know two tattoos are covering his arms. One of them is a red arrow that goes up from his elbow all the way to his forehand. And it's this red arrow that kind of glows, and his other arm is another short sword that glows on his right arm, and there are both red tattoos. Okay. 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 Uh, can I roll uh, a history check to kind of see if I know anything of these symbols? Yeah, go ahead. You guys I would like to do the same. Well? History's ten. Uh, Gary, you make a check too, since you saw this. Okay. A solid ten. Ten? Okay. <laughs> uh, my intelligence is one. I don't know. I don't have yours open right now. Uh, I got a 14 on the roll. Okay. You know... Oh, hang on one second. That's a good... Uh... Yeah, your intelligence is one. Okay, so 15. Uh, 
you know that somebody in Shoria does enchanted tattoos. Oh, sweet. Who knows that? Gary just, does. Just Gary? Just Gary. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to write it down if... Okay. Maro, can you hear us? Yes. Yes, I okay. can. Cool. Alright. So you guys want to continue on down the road? Yeah. We should continue to show you. We have to make haste. We should okay. continue. Are any of you guys going to take... Are any of you guys going to take sleep? Because if you don't, you'll suffer exhaustion next day. Yeah, I, I will now sleep. Yeah, I will rotate out and have the other two people that were guarding watch. Uh, okay. I'm going to drive the cart. I want right. to drive the cart. Chuck, like, make an animal handling check. And Maro, make a perception check. Well, I'm going to go to sleep, but I want to see if there's any birds around. Make a perception check with Maro. There's then. one. He's driving the cart. <laughs> uh, 19 for animal handling. What? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and I got an 18. Okay. I don't um, know if perception is minus one, so 17. Okay. So... Frunk and Melsk lay in the back, and Frunk takes up the whole entire back, and Melsk just takes a little corner. And I lay on my side. <laughs> and um, <laughs> as they are falling asleep, they look at each other and kind of give each other acknowledgement through their challenge and their combat, and the duel kind of between each other today. And Tuck Tuck <laughs> kind of steps up, takes the reins, and kind of looks around and goes, <laughs> and with like perfect precision, the horses kick off in a full on sprint. But the cart isn't moving very quickly or anything like that. It's very steady while the horses are moving very fast. While this is happening, you also notice, Gary, that the closer you come to the city and the edge of the forest, the light that you saw exiting the forest is slowly dimming as the sun is rising at this time. It's okay. starting to be around 7 a.m. and you guys are starting to come closer to the gates. And you also notice, Gary, there was two guards on top of the gate waiting from the eternal flame. Okay. And let's say an hour goes by and you are approaching the gate. What would you guys like to do? Hi! <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> he imitates uh, Frunk. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> What's in it? Yeah. Hello, in, fellow traveler. Imperf imperfect Frunk accent and everything. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> he mimics him perfectly. Perfect. Good Hi. evening, friend. Are you wishing to come into the city of Shoria today? That'd be cool. Okay. I need you to go around to the side here and go into the carriage entrance if you don't mind. Uh, okay. Sure. Have a good day. Enjoy Shoria. And you notice to the there is a large wooden gate to the side of this that kind of opens up with two doors, opens up, and you're able to pull the carriage in. And there yeah, are stables. Right. Yeah. So you're coming in, and there are stables to your left. And you notice this is the first time you really come in to Shoria, not the western gate. And you all, whoever is awake, you notice that Shoria is basically two long roads. From this angle, you can see there is a road that goes horizontal, another road that goes horizontal, and in the middle of the town is the tavern. And it's basically the center of town. And to the east, far gate, is the residential area. To the northeast is the blacksmith and the market area. Right in the middle, behind the tavern, is the city town, basically the, the Jarl's home the owner, the mayor of this city. And straight in from the western gate is the general goods store. There also is a chemical store, like a potion store, next to you. And you guys all notice this as you Hoppe walk carry. into the area. Yeah. Do what would you like any, to do today? Do we see What's any that? guards on our like way in to the, uh, through the... There's a few. You uh, you walk in as with your cart, and there is two ladies working the stable who help you saddle up your horses and put your cart to the side and they look at you and they ask for your reins and they say would you like to keep your cart here for the day we can keep all your horses and your carriage here for the day if you would like it would be yeah. a cost of one gold one gold one freaking yes. gold Tuck. Uh, I'm asleep 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, am I awake now? I would say with this commotion and beating people, you're starting to come to awake. Um, uh, Funk wishes to sell the horse. cart and the horses to you the young lady. No. <laughs> would you say? Material to possessions are worthless. We don't need the money. I would. I would prefer the horse. Yeah, because we can use it to take to um, Zale. Do you pay the lady for the like the keep of the horse? I'll, the I'll pay you gold. Okay. Thank you, my good friend. And she takes it, and puts it in her pocket. She takes the horses and pulls them off, and unhooks them from the cart. And then you see another man, a younger man, a teenager, come up and take the cart. And he takes the cart and puts it behind the shed or the barn. And your two horses are start to eat their hay and kind of just keep it easy as you are able to do what you want with the day. It's about sunrise, about 7.38 in the morning. All now, of you are waking up. Has it just been one day since we left? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was yeah, right. No problem. Yeah. Um, have we all technically considered had a long rest? I would say all of you have had a long rest just with the travel and everything like that. Sure. So okay. you all get all your hit points back, you get all of your spells back, and you have anything burnt, you can bring it back to. Is uh, is there a visual representation of this town that we could uh, glance at? Yes. I can't do that. Also, there. just a quick meta question. Thank you. Can you speak what language? Like, I naturally. I speak uh, common and uh, Aran. Aran? Mm -hmm. Is Aryan, that an animal Aryan, language? Aryan, Aryan, yeah. I believe so. It's I just want to know if with D speak, can I speak to DJ? Or he understands this in common. Yeah. He understands common, but to do that, I do not know. I have to look it up. I mean, he okay. can't. I just he can't really speak. He only mimics. It's yeah. It's more of a mimicky. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Aryan is his natural. Yeah. Language though, I wonder whether or not with these speak I can speak. Uh, Aran was the language of the elemental plane of air. Um, is breathy, relaxed language that has been described as a slow exhaling of air. Okay. Ah. So, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm not so gonna be able to. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so this this is a. A small representation of what the world is of Soria, and uh, I would like to look to my companions and say, "Do you have any idea where we could find this flint?" You know, he would be. Uh, I don't know, beam. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Let's go grab well, a beer. He would be. He would be in here, the flashy well, flame, the center of the city. I don't think I would necessarily. I haven't been to the tavern, but they have, so I was hoping yes. they would. Yes, Morrow and them had. Morrow and Gary have been to the tavern. You also know that there is a blacksmith over here. This would be the general goods store. Here is the hall for the Jarl, where he the, is living. The Jarl, and here is like the residential residential area, and this is the alchemy stop. Who would you guys like to go first? Or what would you like to do today? I have enemy swords that I need to get rid of. Should we sell it, Mr. Milsk, as iron, or should we sell it for gold, as you're the one that can work with these materials? Well, I think we should go and see how much they would fetch before we decide to melt them down. Okay. This time, people are starting to come out of their houses. There's a few people with their carts and their market things that they use to sell foods or dry goods and clothes and leathers and there you can see that they're heading up to the northeast area where the market is and the blacksmith home there is a few eternal flame guards that are walking around uh, people are, are starting to stumble out of the flashy flame tavern in the middle of the city you also notice um, give me a perception check. Two people. I'll do one. Got this shit. Alright, so you two do it, and let me know what you get. Uh, 16. Okay. What'd you get, Gary? I got, uh, 
15 minus 1, 14. <laughs> so, uh, Tuck Tuck, you notice there is basically four Eternal Flame Guards. Highly covered in armor, very well armed. Seems like they're protecting someone, walking in a formation of two in front and two in back, and they are around this woman. And she... You don't get a super good look at her, but you can tell she is prestigious. Mm -hmm. And she is red with fire hair. Literal, literal fire as hair. And they are heading towards the north. Towards the Jarl's home. Okay. Uh, and this is uh, on the streets, correct? Yeah, you're, you're kind of just watching this as they're putting your horses away and starting the day. I would like to... Um, how close are the buildings to each other? It depends where you're looking. The residential area, houses are stacked next to next to next. Mm -hmm. And then there is, to the left, there is the, there is the general goods store, which is a giant wooden area, and then there is also like another place next to it. I, I would like to um, try and blend into the crowd and just kind of follow along with them. I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay, make a sneak, a sneak check. Well, for stealth. Uh, 18. They don't notice you. What would the last of you guys like to be doing as he's slowly following these people? Uh, with my association with the fire... Eternal Flame people. Yeah. Do I know who this is? Make a history check. Seven, and what is my plus? Probably not that good. History. Zero. Seven. <laughs> you do not know who this is. You know that she's very important. Great. I go to say hello. <laughs> She is about <laughs> 25 feet in front of you now. I've got 30 speed. <laughs> okay, are you guys, anybody else following with you? No, I'm I'm still, I, like make a I was pick. under the impression that Frunk was about to help look and see how much we could get monetarily for some weapons. So I, I saw something that... shiny and it distracted me. Well, as he didn't she... say anything, I assume he's running at top speed to go to the <laughs> shop, so I run to catch up to him. Okay. Thinking that uh, he's going to sell it without me sharing any of the wealth. Okay. Morrow and Gary, what would you like to do? I would like to make um, a history check to see if I know who the woman is. <clears throat> you can make a history check too, yeah. Excuse ahead, me, lady. Gary. Hello. Hang on one sec. Gary, what do you want to do? While all this is going on, I'm going to attempt to sneak away and find the tattoo person. Okay, where are you going? Uh, I guess I need to figure out whether or not I know where she's at. Or they are at, I guess. Uh, you don't really Am know. You just know he's in the city. Oh. I thought I knew where he was. Um, no, you just know that there is an enchanted tattooist in shore. Yeah, you don't know exactly where. In that case, I'm just going to sit back and watch. Okay. So, Frunk and Mail are walking up to this person, and uh, Mara, what'd you get? A nine and an eight in history. An eight. You know this is a high authority in Shoria. That's about as much as you know right now, too. So I follow, Frunk, I follow Frunk and see what what how how she reacts to Frunk. Okay, um, <laughs> Frunk, as you are, <laughs> I'm curious. Running up to these people, the two Eternal Flame guards. One of them with a giant mace pulls the mace out and looks at you and goes, Stop! Do not move any closer to the Jarl. And the other one pulls out a longbow and trains it at you. I hear all of this, correct? Yes, you're you're watching this hidden right now. I try and stop with my hand out. Kind of like, Greetings, I am Frunk. <laughs> the man with the maul, the giant warhammer. What do you want? What do you want here? 
I don't know who this person is, and I'd like to introduce myself. It's the Jarl of Shoria. Just, just move on with your day. Okay. I'm still yeah. trying to find out who helps so you me. Know, get a hug. Get a hug. <laughs> Do not know the Jarl? This is the Jarl of Shoria. I've recently fallen down from the Evermount Mountains. Uh, I used to work for the Order of Malice. I don't know who rescued me. Yes. I don't know if that helps you here, but we do not have time for you. Very well. Continue with your day. What is this Jarl you speak of? And the other one with the bow kind of gives you a snicker and just laughs at you. Goes, she owns the town, you idiot, you fool. <laughs> and then... Oh, uh, she is the protector of these people. Well, well, My well, well while of this course. is happening... Pick your pocket. Pick your pocket. <laughs> Can I... <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Can I see, like, you know, uh, her facial expressions? Like, how is she reacting to all this? Yes, this is happening very fast, and at first she kind of, kind of dismisses it and acknowledges that her guards are doing their job and protecting her. And um, as they continue to talk, would you roll stealth? 18. Uh, 18, so, yes. Okay, okay. She doesn't notice you, but you do notice she has... No, 17, I'm sorry. 17. You notice she kind of turns around and as she turns to look at front of them. You notice on her back, she has a large great sword. Very big. It covers from her shoulder all the way down to her feet. And it's not even... One might say frunk sized Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not shown. It's in a scabbard. But the hilt is a orange and red hilt with fire coming out of the top of it. Little fire is shooting out of the top of the hilt. Oh, and so the uh, guards carry a great sword like a freaking huge great sword. Yes, is the description. You also notice. I just want to make she, sure I got that right. Yeah, she is quite tall. <laughs> she is probably seven feet tall. She's seven foot tall. Yeah. She, yeah, she's what? seven foot tall. She's about as tall as she. Her, she's pretty tall. Yeah, she's a big will belt. You can tell she's a uh, soul. Okay. Big girl. She looks she's sturdy. Girl. She looks yes. like a human, right? I, I... She looks humanoid. Humanoid. Okay. She looks yes. sturdy. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> big boned. So like when 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 this is happening, she she's like, oh okay, you know whatever. Yeah. But is she like you know? Uh, uh, you know, upset. <laughs> upset about the entire thing yeah. happening, or is it, is it like, oh yeah, good. You, this is how you should be treated. You filthy. Animal. It's more of it's more of nonchalant. She's just like, and then she turns, she turn around to her guard and goes, "Don't worry about them. They're just they're just interested." And she leans over and goes, "Hello, I'm the Jarl. If you want to talk to me, come meet with me. I have to attend the meeting, but come meet with me in my." In my uh, my house, I'd love to speak with you. Anybody in Shoria? Yeah. I, I just like wave you. back and say greetings. I am Frunk. <laughs> Hello, Frunk. My name is Stephanie. Nice to meet. You. And the guards kind of sheath their weapons and they kind of walk off. And she just kind of learns from us. Please come, come talk to me. I love to meet everybody in Shoria. Yeah. All right. And as she's walking away, she, yeah. Oh, okay. And she kind of tilts her head at you, and she. Looks at her two guards and he goes, Calm down, why are you so edged this morning? <laughs> <laughs> and they take and they walk back that way. Maybe it's your huge freaking sword. <laughs> as she's walking away, does Frunk notice the sword on the back? Yeah, as she walks away, you all notice this. I like your sword! sword <laughs> she just pulls the thumb up. <laughs> um I wish I had one like that. Yeah. <laughs> Frunk. <laughs> yes. How tall are her guards? They're probably six or seven feet. They're all humans. All right. I want to pick boys. <laughs> one of the seven foot tall ones. Okay. I'm going to copy their face. Okay. Just their face, not see what they're wearing. Yeah, not what they're wearing, just their face. I would have to make you give a perception check. They're wearing full plate armor, so... You wouldn't be able to see their helmet. Oh, they're wearing helmets? Yeah, I, I said they were wearing full plate armor at this time. Oh, I didn't realize that included a full yeah. face helmet. 
Yeah, sorry, I should have been more clear about it. Yeah, they're wearing the full plate armor. Boo okay. DM, boo, boo. I'll make a perception check. Yeah, go ahead. Oh shit. I got a 19 minus one 18. I would say you'd be able to mask yourself in their um, exact replica armor if you wanted. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want to look like one of them. Right now. Yeah, I'm casting uh, the... Yeah, okay. So you're standing there and with a flick of your hand... I mean, I still have my cloak under. over this, but I pull my cloak up. Okay. So Just you in are case. covered in this ebony onyx plate mail at this moment. Yeah. <laughs> and you look like one of the high the high guards of Eternal Flame. Nice. And how long does that last? Is that forever? It doesn't have a last. Okay, that's fine. I can I... just pretty much change yeah. my face. Yeah. Okay, cool. What else did you guys like to do now? You have talked to the R of Shoria. Well, it All sounds right. Frunk. It sounds like she has a meeting to attend to, but welcomes talking to us afterwards. Let us check on these weapons, and of then course. we shall pay her a visit. Of course. And then I, I believe we have to meet some sort of man with matches at a bar. Oh, and Frunk, just tell me where you're going. I'm tired of chasing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I think of uh, most things as a competition. I like to get there first. But speaking well, of reaching other general goods... And I, take, and I off. take off as soon as he says meet you. I saw where this was going. Are you going to General Goods or the Blacksmith? General Goods. Okay. The General Goods, you have passed it walking out. It was on the west, right next to the west gate. Mm -hmm. It was the first building right there. Yep. And, okay. Are you guys all headed that way? What else would you guys do? Okay. Go ahead. You guys I, can I'm, do whatever I'm you gonna, want. I'm going to go with them after okay. hearing you know, that we'll meet with them later. Okay. What about you, Morrow, and a now high Eternal Flame Guard? What would you like to do? They're they're going to the bar. General Goods. They're going to the General Goods store. Um, Ooh, I'm gonna go to the I, store. I would like to return to the bar. Okay. What about you, Morrow? Actually, I'm gonna go to the bar and get hammered. Okay. Like once again, the two people go to the bar. <laughs> uh, we'll start with the two people going to the three people going to the General Goods store. Okay. So you walk in, you go to the store, and as you walk up, you notice it's a two-story building with a third with a large roof. It is wooden uh -huh. in nature, and it's more of a green wood, not brown. Looks like more of a lively tree kind of wood. And you walk in the door. Let me get... Okay. You walk into the general goods store, and as you walk in, it's nice. There's about four or five aisles of items of goods you can buy. There are tools, there are backpacks, there are maps, parchments, small little things of matches you can buy. Anything you really look for, generally, you could find. There is also a... That's the name, General Store. Yes. <laughs> there is a small cabinet with glass right next to the register or a young man by the name of Stonejaw. Okay. He has a little thing, nameplate in front of him, and he's just kind of sitting there drinking something out of a cup and looking through a paper. Human? At this point. Yes. I simply walk up to him, extend my hand. Greetings, I am Frunk. Uh, I take out the glaive, the shield, and the black box. I put it on top of the thing. I say, how much? Well, mighty fine of you to come by this morning, my friend. I'm Stonejaw. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Stonejaw you or Stoned Jaw? Stone yeah. jaw. It says that my nameplate right here, man. What can I get for you? I have items. I would like gold. 
Uh, what do you got, man? What do you got? I raise the glaive, I raise the shield, and I raise the black box. I oh. don't do weapons here, man. You gotta go to the blacksmith. I'll look at that box, though. Okay. You don't uh, want this box? It's very nice. I have I no like use for it. Uh, okay. I, I look because I was unaware of a box that he was <laughs> procuring at this time. Frunk, what is this box? I found it in the dresser. I don't need... It does not fit anything that I have in this box. I do not need it. You haven't opened it. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's yeah. small, right? No, it's it's like a, a about this big and this big. It's like a jewelry box. Okay, so to Frunk, that well would hold made. like a cup of mead. It, to Frunk, it has Maybe. no use. Yeah, I, you haven't I, opened it yet, so you don't really know. <laughs> exactly. Before Stonejaw takes it, I, uh, I'll put my hand on top of the box. Frunk, I will give you 20 gold. <laughs> he says, uh, Stonejaw, can you beat this offer? Uh, I don't really want that box, but it's got the Eternal Flame symbol on it. Did you steal that from them, man? No, it was given to me. You are uh, also uh, going uh, to uh, give it uh, two of gold. Of course, yeah. Uh, I will I give you two gold to pretend like you never saw this box. Are you going to do that? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to slide two gold to him? Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. With the advantage. Uh, the first two, 16 and then 15. He looks at you and goes, Oh, I don't want that box at all, man. You can have it. I don't want it. You mean, what box? Right, Stonejaw? Absolutely. I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Hello there. I haven't seen a Kenku in a long time. Hello there, friend. Hey there. Oh. What what can I do for you? I'm I'm just here with my party. Do you want some health potions? We have some health potions. We got some cool cloaks in the back as well. We got some thieves tools that you're trying to get some trouble. We also got this really cool pipe. And he holds up this pipe with a dragon emblem, a dragon like kinda into it. Ooh, I want the pipe. You You're not, not here. here. <laughs> <laughs> that that pipe does seem pretty interesting, though. <laughs> it's very gnarly, man. I'll give it to you for fifty gold. It does some cool stuff. Like what? Do you want to see? Hell yeah, I want to see. All it. right, all right, all right. Hang on one second. <laughs> he slowly puts some tobacco in there. And he takes it. He looks around. There's no one else in the store. Kyle leans over, checks the door away. Takes a big puff of it. And he blows out. And it's like this like a dust cloud, like a cloud of smoke. And then it suddenly forms to this giant pirate ship on this wave going over the mountains. You can see in the background, the whole entire smoke has converted into an image and plays a whole entire scene in front of you. And he kind of leans back and just laughs. <laughs> yeah, every time you puff him, it, it makes a cool scene. No matter what you're thinking, it's the type of smoky monsters. 50 gold? Or trade? I would be cool with a trade, too. Unfortunately, I have I have nothing to trade. You have this box if you want to get rid of it. <laughs> I don't see a box. <laughs> I have... <laughs> Frank, I have given you 20 gold. I have... Uh, Very well, you hold the box. Mr. Mr. Man you... of Talking Slow, do you have a device uh, that would be able to hold much more than this box that we can use for our travels? I got some bags. You want a bag? How large it's is this bag? It's like the backpack, you know? You, for you, it would be small, but for normal people, it would be the right size. I don't need that. What about you, Kenku? Would you like this pipe? 50 gold or some trade? Or maybe I'll, you could put some arm and make a fun story to me. I like fun stories. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to think about it. I'll, Ask your friends. I'll, I know they have some gold. Look at all those weapons. Well, maybe if we sell these weapons, we might come back for the for the pipe. It'll be here when you're ready, my good friends. It's all pretty right. neat. And he takes another puff of it, and it blows out. And this time, 
it's this large dragon kind of just coasting over and you see he blues fire and the smoke turns from a, a gray to a purple okay I also right. got a cool cape if you want that man it's pretty I mean, cape, capes are pretty cool but I do have a question do you happen Go to have a, a bag of holding line bag, bag of holding bag of holding it holds stuff in a bag right yeah, and it's like yeah. a really, really big bag, but really uh, small. It's one of those crazy things. Oh, it's only oh, big on the oh, inside. oh, I know what you're talking about. And he kind of turns around, and he pulls out this little bag, and it's a satchel. And it's got, like, the cover that flips up, and it's just, it's just really cool bag that is brown and leather and has, like, two giant buttons on the bottom of it. He goes, I got this bag. How much for the bag? Uh, let's say 10 gold. It's pretty sweet. 10 gold, you say? It's not. It's 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 a bag, and it's a satchel, and it's pretty cool. All right, well, I'll, I'll think about it while I think about that pipe. It might oh, be man, bad. you got to think for a long time. Yeah, well, I am a monk. I like to meditate and think uh, about things for a long cool. time. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You do you, man. You do you. What about you guys? Would you like some health potions or some anything else? I have any kind of tools, maybe some thieves tools if you're trying to get some trouble. Frank does not need anything else. I'll lean in next to Stonejaw. I happen to have a liquid that can give you visions like the smoke if you're willing to make a trade. (laughs) Oh, really? Let me try something if you don't mind. I'm not in the business of giving free samples. But oh, I appreciate well, your time. man. Oh, okay. Uh, come on, man. Just, <laughs> just one little slip, please. I need you to make a uh, insight check. No, not insight. Persuasion. Persuasion check. I'm going to make a persuasion check on you, and you need to make a deception check. Is it the uh, first one? Okay. You you kind of like are kind of eager for like nah I'm not gonna give him a free sip. You kind of wanted to for a little bit, and you're like nah that's not that's not how I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you thought about it, but no. You know what, Stone Jaw? I'll be back. Uh, you guys come back anytime. I'm here with the cool pipes. I got health potions. I got cool cloaks. Got some cool tools. Whatever you need. All Generally, right, all right. I got it. <laughs> On to the matchstick right. man. Yep. All right, we go back to Maro and Gary. You walk into the bar, right? Yeah. Maro is still way. there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right, so what do you guys um, do when you get in the bar? It's um, it's not crowded um, right now. Need. There's okay, the same old bartender, Hive, the gnome who's standing at the bar. Tend. What would you like to do? On my way to the bar, I have slightly altered my face to not look exactly like the guards. Okay. But I have kept the the armor and stuff. Okay. And I... Just me out. I'll let uh, Morrow do what he's going to do first. Okay. Morrow, what are you going to do? There's probably two people in this bar right now. It's... Early in the morning. I'm gonna go to the bar and get and, and order a, a big mead. Okay. And once again, you walk up and Hive, the gnome is standing there and he says, for, Oh, hello there. You're back again for some more mead. What can I do for you? He's a gnome? He's a gnome, yes. I, I would like uh, your strongest mead, please. Oh, of course, of course. That would be one silver. And he runs over, grabs out of the cask, and runs back and gives you this cup. One silver for your meat, my friend. Best meat of all of Elf. Would you Wonderful. like more? Uh, yeah, keep them coming. Okay, buddy. I will do. I see you came back from your journey. How did that go? Oh, thanks for asking. Oh, you're still alive. That's really wonderful. Usually people die when they go into the woods by themselves late at night. You must be very talented. So if I was, I was with some, some friends, Oh, really? Bring them by and get more meat. Is, get more meat. 
What what is <laughs> what has been killing these people? Uh there is there's there's evil things at night. There's also bad people, cults, you know, the sorts of people you don't want to deal with at night in no dark forest by yourself. I ask him okay, I want I'm I'm going to um I'm going to ask him if he knows about the the moon cult, cult of the moon, whatever it's called. Okay, make a persuasion check. It's called Eye of the Moon. Eye of the Moon Cult, yes. All right, cool. Just want to make sure. Oh, 17. Well played. He goes, he kind of leans in and goes, Do you know the Eye of the Moon Cult? To you, Maro. He asks you if you know of them. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. He's he's asking you if you know of them. If I know of them, um, yeah, I heard I've heard of them, but I don't know much about them. Oh, well, would you like to I know if he knows? Secret? Yeah, oh, uh, of course I would. Okay. Uh, there is a person who comes here later at night. So he works with a organization that tries to fight off the Eye of the Moon cult. His name's Flit. You'll find out here later tonight. Flip. What? Flip or Flint? Flint. Flint. Yes, Flint. Oh, this is the guy we're supposed to be meeting. Oh, you're supposed to beat him? Oh, you already know then, don't you? No, I don't. Tell oh. me more. I, I don't say that to him. I'm just talking in my head. No. <laughs> yes, yes, Flint. He is. He knows that I and the Moon Cult. He's trying to stop them. Come meet with him tonight. They'll be here. Right Am around I within earshot of this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And as he is talking tomorrow, he runs over to you and goes, Oh, hello there, sir. What can I buy for you today? Mead? Mead? Uh, I'm wondering if I might be able to speak with you in private. Uh, of course, my sir. What would you like? Anything for the Eternal Flame. What can I do for you? Uh, you... Do you have somewhere we can speak in private? Yes, yes. And he points to the right, and there is a little room over that way. With the door, he kind of comes behind the bar and follows you and walks in front of you really quickly and goes, "Oh me!" And there's a small little cabin, a cabinet with like all the stored meats and other grocery items. And he kind of turns in there, closes the door behind him. And it's pitch black, and he pulls a little cord. And he goes, "Hello, what can I do for you?" I uh, I wave. This little light's kind of going back and forth. I wave my hand over my face to show. Uh, who I am for a brief what? second and oh, wave my hand back over my face and I go uh, I have been undercover as okay. we met a figure in the forest earlier and oh. I recognized he had enchanted tattoos and I know of a person here in town and I would be grateful if you could point me in the right direction where I could meet with said person. Okay. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Okay. <laughs> Nat 20. No way. And a six. <laughs> oh, good thing you got advantage. Um, he, he gets really close to you, and then he close, he puts his hand to the door. And you see he is actually casting something. You see his fan, his hand light up with this bright, bright white. And the door is covered in this arcane nature. And, right. he kinda gets and he gets closer to you and goes, We have enchanted tattooist here. He's quite amazing. And he holds up his hand and he has a wrist of an enchanted tattoo. And it's kind of like, okay. it's like wood as in trees are interchanging going over and down around the whole entire arm and you notice right. as he holds his hand up this white color of the tattoo is fading nice he is well he has helped all of us very much uh, he'll be here later tonight you can find him name's flint oh great great 
Be nice, well, though. He, he's a little, he's a little crazy. Yeah, he, uh, he likes to use weapons. He makes them appear out of nowhere. It's pretty cool. He's a cool guy. Gotcha. And he holds his hand up, and you see the tattoo light up again, and the door changes colors again. And he opens the door, and he holds it open, and goes, "Anyway, have a wonderful day." Well, thank you for your information. I, I uh, very uh, much appreciate it. Of course, come back anytime. Just buy more mead. Would you like some mead? Oh, absolutely. Of course, I'll meet you at the bar. Me. And he runs to the bar, and he's like, I'll give you meat. Here you go. One silver, please. I hand over the silver. And he walks back over to Morrow, and he gives you another cup, Morrow. goes, one silver, please. Obviously, you finish your first one. I drop a silver piece on the, um, on the thing. Okay, he takes your silver pieces, and he runs back over, and you guys have your meats now. All right, let's go back to you three. What do you guys want to be doing as, this, as you are... This is kind of happening at the same time, okay? Uh, to the blacksmith. The blacksmith? Okay, he is to the north northeast. You'll pass the tavern on the way, and you'll pass through the middle of the town. You pass through the market area. It's more like a uh, large circle of buildings, and in the middle of it is like small merchants trying to sell stuff. It kind of looks like this. Like you could see, there's a market area with these buildings. Bizarre. Yeah, a little bizarre. And you can hear the racking of hammers on anvils and these large, large noises from behind the market, actually. There is this open forge, and the forge has this large, large smelter with this giant hole in the front of it. And there is about five different anvils and this large fire to do all the blacksmith work. And Malsk, you're actually kind of jealous of yeah. this, because it is very nice. And it's not even in a building. It just has like a gazebo type ceiling with this metal. It's not wood. It's just really, really nice dark metal. Can I and see... You... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. There you go ahead. Uh, can I see the proprietor of this establishment? As you were walking up, from behind the smelter, you can see he was working, putting stuff in. A large Goliath, almost eight feet tall, steps out from below, from behind this smelter. And he walks over and he's got this giant hammer in one hand and he's got a sword in this hand that looks like nothing in his arms. He has tattoos coming from the top of his head all the way down to his feet. And they are covering his face, his body, everything. He's shirtless at this time, has a pale blue complexion with scars across his chest and up his arms. And you also notice from his elbow down, there are burn marks covering some of his tattoos. You also notice that he has these brand new tattoos in the palms of his hand. They have basically fire it's like a small fire that expands from his hands and wraps around his wrist all the way up, transforming into an ice shard and comes all the way up his arm to right above his bicep. And the inside of the tattoos are these glyphs and, and they're small wards. And they are changing colors from a light, dark, dark red to lighter red as it goes to a light, light blue up his arm every time you see him hammer down. And he notices you as you walk in, and he looks up and has this incredible happiness to himself. He goes, oh, hello there, my friend. How can I help you today? In, uh, in Frunk fashion, greetings, I am Frunk. Oh, hello there, Frunk. And he grabs your arm by the wrist, like by the forearm, and does it full on grasp. Hello, Frunk. My name is Gregory. What can I do for you today? Uh, with my friend here, Melsk, we're having a fair competition to see who can get the most kills, and we're trying to figure out who gets the best loot. We found us a shield, a box, and a some sort of glaive for tiny mortals. What can you do oh, with these? Would you like to sell them for me? I could use them for metal. Our friend here is uh, quite the smith himself. Oh, hello! Are you a blacksmith, my friend? And he extends his hand as well. And he shakes you right in the form as well. Very strong. And as he does this, you can feel the heat 
from his hands and his palms of a good blacksmith. You know the calluses on the fingers and on the palm and on the wrist and everything. You recognize this. As he Does he, rec he recognize his mind as well? Yeah, I would say he does. He recognizes and feels it, and he's able to understand. He kind of gives you a acknowledgement. Oh, what are you professing? What what is what is your main weapon or armor you like to craft, my friend? Well, mainly I stick to mendings of chain mails and armors, and well, I, my specialty is actually making forging hammers. Oh, wonderful! You'll have to make me some, please. Well, if you don't mind. Could I use one of your anvils and work aside you? Of course. I will rent out a few anvils for you. If you only for you or maybe more for What about you? Oh, Kanku, my friend. Hello there. <laughs> and he comes over and tries to shake your hand. Tuck, tuck. <laughs> and he... <laughs> Hello there. Huh? Hi. How are, How are you? you today? I have not seen Kenku in a while. They are great. They make <laughs> me laugh and very jovial. <laughs> <laughs> and then he walks back over to Malisk and he goes, If you want to rent hammer, you can rent hammer for a full day. 25 oh, gold, full day. I pull out my own hammer and I pull out the chain mail that I had broken and I said, Can I mend with your anvil and smelt? Absolutely. 25 gold day you can share in my blacksmith shop. That seems a bit steep, friend. Oh, I have or the I... best. I have the best in the whole entire city. Or the only. Oh, 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 you can't get to anything else. Do I notice any of the glyphs that I would have, like, noticed from clan members in my region? Make a history check. 17. Oh. History... 17. You do. Not his tattoos or glyphs, but you notice on his chest and coming up his back, there are tattoos of the Ordo Malice, but they are so badly scarred from battle wounds that you can't really tell. The only reason you can tell is you rolled so high. Okay. It seems like they were ruined by, during battle or some kind of way. They are very symmetrical. Both of them are ripped right down the middle and to the sides. You can't not see them very well. Okay. Can well, I... What can I do for you, my friend? I see that you've uh, fallen from a high as above, and I kind of point out to uh, his sigils as well. Are you... He kind of looks around. The Ordo Malus? I, uh, I kind of on my... I have the glyph and the writings of Kira on my side of my pauldron. Mm -hmm. Very cool. He he looks, oh, I see. Well, well, my friend, I have left there a while, while, while ago. I am very old, but I have not been back there in a long time. I am not able to go back. Very I few will, that fall I are set able my, to get up. I set my shop here now, and I create weapons for the Eternal Flame and everybody who wants to deal some damage. Very good. Uh, how good are you in specializing in armor creation? I'm looking to get some plate armor. Looking to protect yourself armor. or Absolutely. deal some damage. <laughs> Paul got it, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, sorry, uh, Skyrim. <clears throat> uh, yes, I can make you plate armor. I actually have some right now. Would you like it? Yes, definitely. And he goes behind and he goes and grabs his plate armor. And it's very well made. And you can see from the inside there is a symbol of him. And it's three triangle heads of arrows that connect together. Okay. It's this full symbol. And he has it kind of engraved inside. And plate armor, I have it written down. Let's see how much plate armor costs for you. It's pricey. It yeah. is. You get that malice discount though, bro. That's what you I'm want thinking. half plate or full plate? Full plate. Full plate. Full plate will run you about 1500 GP. That's fine. You have 1,500 gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got to help each other out. <laughs> yeah, or you can get half plate, which is 750. Uh, what if I provide the materials for another uh, piece to replace what okay. I'm giving you? 
Make a persuasion check. Four. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Hold on. Uh, Brunk I... is just grinning at him, staring into his eyes. <laughs> he's holding the armor out, and he's, he says, I have full plate, which is 1500, or he has half plate, which is only 750. <sighs> okay. I'll come back to you. You think about it. <laughs> but you friends, you want some weapons? Or some armor? What could I do for you? And he says, I could show you my, my favorite items. How about that? Well, but before uh, you do that, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, order, order of the flame, or the, the eternal, eternal flame? flame? Excuse me. Ah, uh, yes, they they run all of Epidel. You could be on their good side, which is fabulous, or on their bad side, which is not so fabulous. Well, you usually that's how it goes. Um, uh, as long as you are nice and courteous, they will be nice and courteous back. Okay, all right. Um, can like uh, how, how is how are they treating you know the people of this area? Uh, very well. We are having issues with our trade routes at this moment, uh, but that is our main my main issue. We are having issues getting our our I don't know if you've heard, but our mead here is wonderful. And we trade our meat through the whole entire country of Epidelph. But the uh, Churn Road, which runs east and west of all Epidelph, runs from Shor Shoria through the city of Zale all the way to Salem. It's having issues. We are keep getting attacked by bandits. Or if you have heard the Eye of the Moon cult, they are causing problems with us. Uh, I, I have heard of them. Uh, although I do not know much about them, uh, could you uh, uh, give me some some background on them? Make a persuasion check. Do you want to help with this, Stephen? I oh, stupid my bad. Melsk. Uh, at this point, I'm looking at the chain armor that I want to mend and contemplating the 25 gold that it takes. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to talk to him a little bit more about his wares and what he's able to do. Okay. What'd you uh, get? That? Seventeen. <clears throat> I could tell you, they are north of here, northeast. There is a giant windmill. It's uh, I have come down this way, this path, but there's a giant windmill, and the eternal flame has been trying to get into it for much time, but they aren't able to. There's no doors or windows. How do you get into a windmill oh, with no doors and windows? <laughs> Uh, and you said that was to the to the north, correct? Yes, you follow the sh the turn road up and follow the way to Zale, and it's on the way. But be careful, they are not very nice at night. There's many creatures. Uh, don't go at night. <laughs> cool. Um, now so weapons, please let me show you my <laughs> weapons. And he turns around and he actually reaches both of his hands into the fire. And you see, as he does this, his hands light up this neon blue. And he pulls them in there, and he pulls out a few things, and his hands are kind of smoking, but he has no pain at all. It seems like he is able to resist fire. And he holds up <laughs> he holds up his first thing, and it's this giant great sword that has blue cuts on the, on the side, of, on the uh, sharp end. And then he holds up something small and holds it in his hand like this and it's a small pair of brass knuckles that have diamonds, or not diamonds, but have like sharp edges on each of the front four right in the thumbs. There also is a well made blade a long sword that is very elegant and very very sharp. You can tell it's kind of a thinner blade. There's also a metal staff which is very weird for you guys to see as a weapon he makes it's this large dark black metal staff with a gnarled top with a little piece of iron just in the middle of it and these are my weapons my friend oh of course my favorite and he throws his hand up real quick and a yo-yo goes by your head and he catches it again and he throws all the yo-yo to you guys 
and it as he holds it out, he clicks the top of it, and about seventeen blades shoot out the side of it. Hmm. So, quick question for you, sir: How of much course. would these weapons cost if someone was interested? They all have their own little prices, but I can help you out if you are willing to buy and spend some money. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, the uh, the staff. How, yes. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about it and how much it, it would cost? Uh, we have the academy here, the Okador Academy, which is our magical academy is here in Shoria. It's one of three cities. And I'm always being told, oh, why don't you make magic weapons, Gary? Why don't you do this for me? So I finally decided to make a metal staff. It's just a regular staff. It's bigger than a quarter staff, and it does it does 1d8 damage instead of 1d6. Okay. And then uh, what about the brass knuckles? Oh, these are... I can't use these. They're too small. But all the humans of the Eternal Flame want me to make them. And you kind of put them in your gauntlets, and whenever you get in a bar brawl, you can deal some damage! <laughs> and they do 1d4. 1d4. Okay. Alright, um... And that would be 5 gold for brass knuckles. I have decided. Oh, you have, my friend! Please, please, tell me! You want to use my anvils? Do you want to buy some weapons? Or do you just want to hang out? I will give you 25 gold to use your shop, and I will also ask if you have any um, smithing hammers that might be better than mine, and I show him the one that I've been using. Well worn. Okay. Uh, he says, I don't have any on hand right now, but I can make you some if you want to come by later. Are you looking for a hammer? A light hammer? Uh, no, a smithing hammer. Which I could also use as a hammer, but I yeah. already have a light hammer, so I... I would have to have something, uh... more impressive than my old standby here. But I thank you for use of your shop, and, uh, I'll get to work both mending the iron chainmail, so I can give that to one of my associates, as well as I'm going to affix the uh, shield pendant onto one of the iron beads of my prayer necklace. One of the shield little uh, decorations or the full bracelet? It will be, the entire bracelet will be affixed to one of the uh, iron balls that I wear around my neck. Would it be around your wrist then or would it be hanging? No, it's on his prayer beads. It's on the ball of my okay. prayer beads that wrap around my neck. Okay. I would say that worked, but uh, we'll have to do some tinkering checks, okay? Okay. Um, you're doing two things, so roll two tinkering checks for your ironworks. So that was uh, four double proficiency, so you roll d20 and add seven. I got a one. Okay. Do I not so, have advantage or anything? I do have all day. <laughs> yeah, I would say throughout the day you can do you can do multiple. So do two. You do one for the scale, the chainmail, one for the bracelet. So that will be for the chainmail, and do one for the bracelet. Uh, sixteen plus seven, so twenty-three. Okay. So you're able to affix this shield bracelet to your chest and but to use it you'll have to actually put your hand up and touch it yeah that's fine okay okay and um i'll come back to you i'll do another tinkering check later okay okay okay, okay. uh you two what would you like uh frunk brings out his justice pike um and he brings out the glaive and the shield that he has and he offers to or asks the blacksmith can he uh coat this in the metal from these two weapons and embed it with the orders of Ordo Malice on it. So it's like a blessed weapon. Uh, for the glaive and the what? The, the shield. shield. You want him to smelt that down and put it on your lance. Yes. Which is a stick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, he can do that. I would say... Uh, let's see. Give it to me to do. I've already rented his 
stuff. You could give it to him to do too. Uh, Glaive. But he can't. Put, say... He can't put the Ordo Malice stuff because I'm a Paladin. I want to try and have a reason for me to being able to use Bless yeah. stuff. If you spend, he could say, if you give me sixty gold, I can melt these down and put it on your weapon. But I could not bless this. You'll have to reach out. To well, it. I just I want will... the insignias of my clan on it. I don't want him to actually so, do anything. Okay, so yeah. so sixty-five gold, he can do all of that. Okay, cool. I give it. Okay, so mark that off for you. Uh, and you, my friend, what would you like, my my friend? Can uh, uh, I show my hand axe that I use. Is okay. there any a, any way you can uh, improve this for me? I, it's sharp, but you know, it, it's just a hand axe. To be honest with you, uh, I I can. It will take me a while to do. If you come by at the end of the day, I can probably make it better for you, or you can buy one of my regular weapons. Okay. Um. How how much would it cost to uh to uh, uh for you to improve this? Hand axe. Uh, I would have to say. It's going to be expensive. I would probably have to say 125 gold to make it a plus one weapon. Cool deal. I'm going to think about it. <laughs> the paladin think, think or the monk thinks. <laughs> Anything else for you? Would you like some of my weapons? I, I'm good for now. Thank you. Yo-Yo is pretty cool. It's it's considered a simple weapon. Oh, that's intent. I, I, I got you. How much for the yo-yo, friend? Oh, uh, my yo-yo. <clears throat> Oh, a simple 10 gold, my friend. A simple 10 gold. It does 1d6 damage, range 10 feet. Does it have, like, the ability to wrap around and lodge itself in because it's yeah. full of blades? Yeah. It's it like a Beyblade. It yeah. just spins. <laughs> Beyblade! No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not something that you could use like a bolo if you were close and wrap around a leg and pull. Not like if a whip. You, if it seems fit to you, it would be difficult, but you could try. <laughs> I look off a little confused and continue hammering away at the armor. <laughs> Alright. Um, did you guys do anything else? Are you buying these weapons or you want to say anything else to this guy? I'm just working alongside Okay. Him. Okay. Uh, uh, make another tinkering check. 11 plus 7, 18. Alright, so you're able to bring the chainmail back to its AC of 18. Alright. Is there anyone in my party that can use chainmail? Frank, okay. Frank would like chainmail. <laughs> uh, I, I, I ask uh, the gentleman that tonight... Gregory. Gregory. Uh, we are going to the... Uh, bar tonight to uh, celebrate our defeat of these moon people and burning their base down. Would you like to join us later tonight? I will try. It depends on how busy I get. <clears throat> the Eternal Flame is always telling me to do jobs later in the day because I need them on a rush job. But I will keep you guys in mind. Have a good day. Enjoy. Well, Come if, back if you want to buy weapons. If, please, you, please. if you need help with any of those jobs that the Eternal Flame are providing, we'd be more than happy to... Uh, do on, on a contract basis to uh you know get some money get some renown with you help you out i could do that what would i call you guys i am frog <laughs> <laughs> uh, come back to me when you need me simply come call back me from me when you need me i am male uh, sky iron fist <laughs> all right so let's go to my own gary what are you guys doing uh i'm just sipping slowly Okay. Uh, <laughs> Pound my surroundings. And breeze, dog. Pound and breeze. You guys have been drinking for a good hour, hour and a half now. You Just each, I would, I would say, you each have um, spent about, what do you guys think, hour and a half, eight, eight beers? Yeah, you've probably had what about part of stuff. sipping slowly drinks eight beers? <laughs> oh, I didn't hear you say sipping slowly, sorry. <laughs> sipping slowly. I'm All trying right. not to get fucked up. How many have you had then? 
Seven, I probably had three Roll that D8. Okay, so then <laughs> you, spent, you, you spent, four, spent, spent four silver. What about you, Maro? Um, hold on. Hour and a half. How many have you drank? Five. So you've had five. So five silver. I need both you guys to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Oh god, this town's gonna be painted with cookies. Cookies. So, but, yeah, but you guys know how, do you know how to make a constitution saving throw? Paul. Mara. Idea. Yeah. Okay. That's an eleven plus one. I got a twelve. Perfect. Nine. So, Maro, you are drunk. <laughs> for the next for the next two hours, you have disadvantage on all ability checks. <laughs> Not charisma. Like <laughs> <laughs> what would you two like to be doing in this bar? Hitting on big. I'm just watching. <laughs> okay, it's. I would say. I would like to make thing. a. Uh, I would like to make a uh, perception check to see if there's any females around. Uh, there is the barmaid who is kind of doing the morning routine of setting the tables up, pulling the, t the chairs off the tables, sweeping around, you know, kind of making the place look nice and fancy. <clears throat> That's right. It's like, still trying morning. To hit up. it's like, I'm yeah, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I'm trying to hit on the barmaid. Uh, are you going to walk up to her as she's cleaning? Or are you just uh, yeah. yell at her? <laughs> just gonna yell at no, her. I'm probably just gonna yell at her. Hello, I'm Mero. <laughs> I'm what? Five beers in? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the yelling stage. Okay, and you are drunk. So you walk up to this lady, and she is a human, uh, white skin, long brown hair, and the and she is holding chairs and slowly pulling them off and putting them down. And she kind of turns around, and smiles at you. And she goes, oh, good morning. How can I help you? I help as I, Please. like, drunkenly try to strike a pose and lean on the on the table. But I spill mead all over myself and the table. Make a performance check. <laughs> Natural 20. <laughs> good stuff. Give me the good stuff. <laughs> She smiles at you and goes, oh, hello there, my friend. Good evening. My name is Meredith. What are you doing here so early in the morning getting so drunk? And she comes and kind of like takes her hand on your side and steps closer to you. And I tell her I'm an adventurer seeking <laughs> rare items. Oh, are you seeking rare items? I am one of those. Would you like to seek me? I would. Absolutely. <laughs> Yar. Oh, well, that is uh, wonderful. If you are free later tonight, I will be here. I have to work now, but come back later, and I will enjoy seeing your item. Oh, he's going to be here all I, day. I wink at her as I take another uh, another swig of mead. <laughs> she smiles and gives you a kiss in the cheek and walks away. And she goes back to working. That's how it's done, boys. Perfect 20, <laughs> boom. <laughs> working for them tips. <laughs> Uh, uh, Gary, you just saw. Looks like I need a acquaintance of you that you have never really seen, on. but he is turning the charm on straight Vincent style, and he is just <laughs> loving this right now. And he, you can see he got, he got some moves. What would you like to do? I, I think to myself, man, he's got almost as much charisma as I do. <laughs> Close. And I continue to yeah. take in the scene and enjoy the surroundings okay. while it's... I wait quietly to see if I can catch Flint okay. or for the rest of our companions. Okay. Uh, so you guys are doing this and you're controlling, having a good time at the bar after a wonderful night out and successful adventure and journey through this stronghold and fighting. You feel you feel like ah, this meat is really good, and the more you drink it, the more you enjoy it. It's 
has this very rich wheat and lager taste to it. It's incredible. The more and more you drink, the more and more you're starting to enjoy it. Um, if you would you like to do anything else, I'm gonna go back to the other three. Nope. It's um, it's it's about lunchtime, so you could order lunch if you would like. Sure. <laughs> lunch. <laughs> I might so, you know chat with the bartender about random things. Okay. He's just kind yeah. of talking and enjoying time with small company. Talk. That yeah, small talk. Would you like to do anything else tomorrow? I'm. Sure. What? I'd like to order some lunch, please. Did you say <laughs> wench? <laughs> I mean... Wench, I need lunch! Amazing. And then you. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Meredith comes over and attends to every need you have. Gets you a wonderful breakfast or lunch, whatever you are feeling at this time. And you're given this full platter of food of eggs and meats and gravy and potatoes. Anything else you guys would like to do? Nope. Okay. No, that sounds. I'm I'm chowing down right now. I'm chowing down right. hard. Cool. I will say, from being around this room, you notice that the bar is pretty low key at this time. Um, right around lunchtime, a few people come in. They order their lunches and they leave. You also notice there is a small gathering of musicians in the corner of this bar and they are kind of standing next to the stage and they're writing their names on a piece of paper. And as you can walk over, you can see there's kind of like a open mic night happening tonight or where they have like bards come and play and see who's the best. Now we're gonna go on to the three people from the blacksmith. What would you guys like to do? It's about, I would say it's about after lunch now. Look friends, I finished the chain mail. Congratulations. Nice. Should we head oh. to the uh, the like town hall, whatever? Should we meet up with our friends at the bar to see if they're doing well first, and then we should go talk with our lovely lady? Knowing them, they'd be drunk by now. Well, more entertaining to watch, I suppose. <gasps> Sure, let's let's check in to make sure they're all right. Okay. So you guys head to the, the flashy flame, and it's this giant of a building, and it has this large um, uh, sign in front of it with three stories. There's the first floor, the second floor has a balcony, and so is the third floor. It's wooden in nature like the other building, the general goods store. You walk in. It's got a small little atmosphere of people eating lunch at their after like their lunch hours. You notice uh, as you walk in, you notice the wizard or the sorcerer of your party is mingling with this very fine waitress, and she is loving on him like no other. And the three of you are seeing this happen. You also notice Gary is like having a full-on conversation with this small gnome creature. And they're just exchanging words and drinking at the same time and having a, a good afternoon, you may say. And you also notice the same thing in the corner, a list of musicians signing up for some kind of event. Uh, I'd like to do two things. Go One, ahead. I'd like to look to see the list and see if our loot friend has put his name on it. Okay. Uh, I doubt that he did, but let's take a look. Any make names it, we recognize? Make an insight check. Okay. Nine. You you see about four names on there. You do not recognize them. Um, and then I would like to go to the bathroom and open up the box in private. Okay. Um you open the box. And as you open it, there is this really, really fine velvet fabric in there. But there's also small rings, about five of them, five jewelry rings set in the fabric. And they have the Eternal Flame, basically, logo circling the outside of them. And in, inside, inscri inscribed, it basically says, 
wear this to feel better during the day. I put on all five rings. Okay. <laughs> all on one hand? Yeah, I put it on uh, all on my left hand. Okay. Um, are you going to focus on any of them? I, I, I kind of ideally all of them, I guess, do I need to do like one at a time? Uh, just make a nat, uh, arcana check. A natural 20 check? <laughs> and I, that's what I was going to say. Cause sure. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Give me that 20. What is it? It's an 18. <laughs> that's good. You notice as you're looking at your index finger and you focus on the ring, the ring's fires glow and emanate this heat from it. And all of a sudden you feel, you feel great. Your body feels healthier and easier to move around. Your body feels lighter. You feel like you've been healed for five points. <laughs> oh, but, I, but I'm at full health. You, well, that's it just, you just feel healthier then. Okay. Do all of the rings look the same? They all look exactly the same, but you cannot activate the other ones. Can I tell this one is used, or will yeah. it be able to be used again? You feel the arcana, the arcane nature leave it as it, as the light vanishes. All right. Um, they one time keep, use. Yeah, I will keep uh, that one ring in my pack. I will shift the other rings that I have, one on each finger of that hand. Um, okay. And then I will stash the box away, and then people can check out my blink. There you go. All right, what do you two want to be doing? Tuck, tuck, and, and frunk. I order a beer. And you come up, and there's the gnome hive. He leans over. Oh, hello. How are you doing today? What can I, what can I get you? Would you like some mead? It's the best in Epidel. Please, please buy some mead. All right. You, you talked me into it. One silver, please. And he runs over, pulls it up, runs back. Here you go. Enjoy. Please come back. Please buy more mead. I put a silver uh, piece down on the on the bar. He snacks it up real quickly and puts it in his pocket. Please come back. Please, please, please. Frunk? Frunk is trying to, like, make his way around the uh, table saying hello to everyone. There's probably a few people in there. They give you, like, like the acknowledgement, but they're kind of eating at the same time. So it's kind of like the awkward, like, what do you, I'm, I'm eating. I wait for the handshakes. <laughs> Hi, I'm they, Frunk. And just sit only, there waiting like an eight forward guy. Just the, a few Hi. of them kind of like just smack your hand and kind of go back to eating. All right. And then you I try notice <laughs> Gary, not Gary, you know, Garris, Gary, no, it's Gary talking to the bartender and you notice good old Morrow looks a little tipsy. Okay. All right, I next try and move into the uh, musicians and say hello to them. They all smile at you very happily and shake your hand and tell them their life story to you, basically. Where they come from, why they play this instrument, everything. Every single one of them wants to tell their life story. They love to talk about themselves. They are fully saying all of these stories. Some of them don't make much sense at all, like how they are just from a different land and they don't know anything here, but they gain their skills from some random demon. But they all sign up and they uh, are jovial to talk to you. I uh, excitedly listen to their stories. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Mario and Gary, you see these people walk in. You see the other party members walk in. Would you like to go up to them or anything? Uh, I wave. Third person, join me. Hello, Hello friend. <clears throat> Where are you sitting compared to the bar? At the bar. Uh, I'm sitting towards the end of the bar. Okay. close to where the yeah. door is because that way I can I'm basically sitting with almost my back to the wall where I can see everything got it how how like crowded is the bar currently the bar has you two at it but the tables have probably in total six people eating lunch right now all right it's and not the, very and cool. the entire establishment is not just not very it's, full. no it's not very full you can tell people are working at this time um, question DM. Uh, yes, sir. What kind of role would I have to make to see if the uh, the innkeeper 
knows of the Volo Guild, the Thieves Guild. Make an insight check. Ten. She doesn't seem to know. That's he what didn't... you see. Okay. All right. Uh, so I join uh, Gary. Okay, Mara, what would you like to be doing? Are you still flirting with this bar, the waitress? Well, yeah. Well, what's going on right now? Am I? What? what um, am I still chowing down? Oh, you're chowing down, and just this waitress is kind of sitting at your hand and foot, doing, hanging out with you, listening to your stories, every once in a while touching you with her hand. And she gets up and walks away and starts to tend to other customers and bring food out to them. And you're sitting there by yourself. You also notice that the rest of your party has come in. And they are slowly meandering throughout the flashy flame. Hmm. If any of you guys want to... Go ahead. <clears throat> Oh, I'm, I'm gonna go over and sit with uh, Gary and Bird Person. Okay. Bring <laughs> my my food and my my stuff and sit next to them. Okay. okay. Why and keep eating. <laughs> Perception check to see if there if I notice anything going on, anything about the few people that are in there, because I find it suspicious that people are in here when everyone's working besides us. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead and roll perception. Is it 12, 14? Um, you notice people are starting to head out. It's around 1 after all this time. People are starting to head back to work. There is about 1 or 2 bar, bards still kind of signing up and leaving the room as well. And it's kind of a small amount of people in this room. You three of the party members of yours and maybe one or two farmers just eating. Okay. And nothing suspicious? No. It's just a normal bar at afternoon time. Can I finish up my food and, um, and, and, and drink some more mead? Okay, go ahead. I would like to motion the rest of the party members over to where we're sitting. Okay. Uh, Frunk and Males, you see Tuck Tuck waving you over at the bar. I simply wave back. Get over here, Frunk. <laughs> <laughs> I walk over to them. I say, is it time to go meet Stephanie? That's what I was I was thinking. I was going you to walk over to Milsk. I guess I look around. <laughs> you see them all at the bar. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they called Frunk over. I'm like, uh, and then I Milsk, over get over here. here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you guys are all standing at the bar now, and you can chit chat it up at the party. I wish to inspect the f sword that spews fire closer. I want to go see this Stephanie. Now, 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 Frank. The there's one important thing that I have to say about trying to inspect the sword. You aren't going to try and fight her, are you? No, I'm going to ask first. That would be impolite to just take it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say, don't go start in a fight just to see the sword. I wouldn't start a fight. I just simply think that I'd, we should go see the sword. Yeah, we... we I've never see... sparred with a woman before. <laughs> it's, it's really not that different. You stab them in the heart, they die. <laughs> But what if she's the Jarl? I don't know what a Jarl is. I do not understand this term either. Apparently they have importance in this town to it. Well, maybe she'll show us her Jarl. <laughs> yes, I would like to see what a Jarl is. Uh, Gary, companions. Mara, are you, are you, are you going to want to talk it? I, I quip <laughs> Jarl in for a good time. <laughs> 
Terry, do you know what a Yarl is? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I thought you were a person of the world. I no. am. Maro, you probably know what a Yarl is. <laughs> He's had a few beers at this point. <laughs> yeah, he'll tell you anything. He's had quite a few beers at this point. He's <laughs> talking to Meredith. He doesn't push. He's over with you guys now. I simply tap Mero on the shoulder. I believe it is time for us to leave. We must go speak with Stephanie. I give you a thumbs up and finish my me. Just pound it. Okay. All right. See so you and guys. Shake and wobble a little. <laughs> you finish up your drinks. I ask and... if he wants to ride on my back, as I see he's slightly impaired. Absolutely, yes. 100%. Naro <laughs> <laughs> slowly climbs his way up your back and kind of rests his head on your back and snuggles in on top of your pauldrons. And it's like, you hear clink, 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 clink. I, I, whisper, I whisper in your ear, quickly, let's go before the barmaid sees. Very well. And I dash out of the bar. <laughs> Very well. You head out of the bar and you head directly north toward the city hall. And this building is different than all the other buildings here. It's made of metal. The same metal that was created for the blacksmith's little gazebo. Very well defined and looks very sturdy. There is one large metal door. And it's a lot taller than you would expect for a door. And there are four guards on the top. There is a middle layer, the front layer, the back base layer, there's a second layer, a third, and on top of, instead of a rooftop, it is a squared off roof with guards patrolling in a square, consistently moving. And you walk up, and the door is unlocked. Would you like to walk Owen? Frunk. Yeah. If you, if you do plan on challenging her, I recommend you take this chainmail. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> now, why don't you go knock? <laughs> sure. All right. So I take the what ten minutes it is the don and doff the new chainmail. It is ten minutes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> He's okay. getting naked in the middle of the courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> you now have an extra eighteen AC. Okay. Just an AC of 18, not an extra 18 AC. Yeah. <laughs> well, Alright, so I'm at 32. Any, like, bonus that you already have? You yeah, get... I didn't have any bonus. Do you have a shield? I was trying nope. to sell a shield. I picked up you a shield. You did sell your shield. Yeah. Okay. So, you walk in the door, and there, at the very end of this long hallway with this really nice table with foods and chairs, everything kind of directly down the middle. On the left side are these banners with the internal flame symbol with black banners. There also is candles lit down the right and left side. Both sides symmetrical, very well placed. The room has a smell of fresh fire from a fire pit. You also hear small music of a bard playing somewhere in this home. You also notice that there is some kind of exchange of angry words happening at the very end of this room. And you see the Jarl and one of the bodyguards with the giant mace are in confrontation. You can't hear them exactly. You can just hear the yelling. Is uh, Gary still disguised as them? Oh, for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you staying off that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you approach them? Oh, no. Or I'm do just... you wait for them to stop yelling? I look down at Melsk and Frunk, or uh, Melsk and Tuk Tuk. You uh, are Frunk. Yes, I look at it myself first and then both of them. Uh, trying to kind of adjust the armor that he's fabricated to make sure everything fits into the right spot. Uh, make sure my nipples don't chaff. Um, I, I look down at you as you gave me a speech earlier about not running into things. I look to you for advice. <laughs> on what you wish for me to do. <laughs> I mean, the two people I, I with high, char to approach the two people high charisma slowly. should be talking. <laughs> I I have high charisma. 
so does your drunk sorcerer and your disguised warlock. <laughs> 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 all right, all right let's, let's who's gonna uh, approach all of you yeah okay as you get closer you can hear their exchange and the jarl exchanges and says out loud we cannot handle this anymore all of our resources are gone we keep getting robbed we can't handle this and the man with the mall is like we are trying our hardest, ma'am. We cannot reach. We can't reach the city of Zale. Every time we send out trade, we are stopped, taking all of our resources. And then she finally kind of like just puts her hands up and just it's like, okay, well, put out a bounty. Put put out put out put out a, a listing. Hire some mercenaries. Let's let's get this job done. We have to get these books there before things end. We have to get them there. And he walks away quickly and she kind of like sits back in this chair this well traditional chair and puts her hands down and kind of puts her hands like this on her face and looks up and sees you and goes sorry you heard that <laughs> greetings like, Stephanie I am Frunk uh, I believe we can assist you did you say that you have a bounty to post <sighs> we we're having some major issues with our trade routes at this time but let me just stop there and let me introduce myself I am the Jarl Ashoria, yeah. Stephanie Craster. I am have been serving this city for many years, providing them with guidance and help, allowing them to strive and grow our resources and our academy becoming one of the best in the cities, one one of the best in the countries. What can I do for you guys today? And introduce yourself, please. Tell me who you are and why you're here. I am nice. Frunk. <laughs> Hello. Frank. I squawk after he says that. <laughs> Hello there. I, I am Tuk Tuk. <laughs> Hello there, Tuk Tuk. It's pleased to meet you. And she kind of bows her head. Away from the I am Gary. Say I'm drunk. <laughs> For, are you still, you're still on my shoulder? Uh, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of smiles up and just goes, like down. Uh, enjoying the meat here, huh? It's, it's quite Very good, much. I tell you. What. It's delicious, isn't it? Uh... We we have to go to Zale to meet a, a wizard. Can you tell us oh. who he is, and we can help you clear the road? <laughs> That's is this how you think things work? You just exchange information very easily. Yes. Please continue introducing yourself. Why is I don't know if I know this guard over here. Who are you, my friend? Oh, hey, I'm Gary. H Hello, Gary. Are you part of the the militia here? Uh. No, kind of. Make I, I found deck. this armor, and uh, okay. I, I'm I'm making a decision. Hold on, I found this armor. I got a eleven plus four, fifteen. Uh, and where did you get this armor? Uh, we were sent as mercenaries to try and find this medallion relic something or other that had been stolen and uh yeah along the way i found this armor and i figured it looked pretty cool are you part of the eternal flame uh, i think you guys are pretty cool i'm well, not, against not allowed you. to wear the armor until you are a part of the eternal flame Huh. Please Will take you it accept off. me? All right. Please take I it wave off. my hand over it and it disappears. <laughs> she leans back and she just smiles at you and she just laughs. She goes, ah, I haven't seen that trick in a while. One of my friends here is actually able to do that as well. Oh, He's do you know Flint? That. Oh, you were no Flint Grizzly? I would like to. I was hoping to meet him at the tavern earlier. Oh, Flint Grizzly, he is wonderful. He's uh he's quite a character. He uh he's very good with the glaive, which I think very great. I've sparred with him a few times, but I still can't get over how he makes it appear out of nowhere. It's mind blowing. He just holds his hand out and it's, it's there. It's so cool though. I wish I could do that. And she stands up and as she stands up, you notice that she is covered in this scale mail that has this 
gold and black that starts from her shoulders and covers all the way to her waist. But her arms are completely uncovered. And you notice that from her top down is this red fire that goes from red to orange to red down her arms. And all the way down to her feet, it kind of turns into a molten lava color with a dark gray and black blending together. You probably don't know what kind of race she is. You do know that she looks similar to the other Eternal Flame who had rocks and coming out of his body. He looks very similar in that kind of fashion of some kind of planar element humanoid. Okay. I uh, approach Stephanie and kneel down on one knee asking if she is a goddess. <laughs> and I am male sky iron fist. I am pleased to make you natural Johnny. She is happy to speak with you and she pulls her hand and pulls you up, grabs you by the hand, pulls you up. You don't need to kneel in front of me. Do not do that. Just be polite and everything will be great. I, uh, I'm i glad to meet some new people today. Are you going to be staying in Shoria for a while? No, we, we must go. We have to meet a water genosi wizard. A water well, we genosi? Will... Oh. We would like to stay here at least through the night, though. Yes, and, yes and you must in stay. The there is a uh, wonderful collection of bards who play open mic at the Flashy Flame. It's wonderful. I met them. They have quite the story. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go visit the Oak Lore Academy, that's another great part of our city. Um, many wonderful books and knowledge is there. It's one of our great schools here. Uh, but uh, you are looking for a war genasi? I am a genasi of the fire element. Interesting. Oh, why are you looking for this water, Genasi? We met a man in the forest. I think he said we were supposed to go and talk to a water wizard. Or was it on one of the blue, the the blue oyster cult? They left a message at some sort of uh, storage <laughs> device, and we found one of their uh, letters. We, oh, did you? Yes. I've never heard of the blue oyster cult. Neither I have, have I. Some... <laughs> I do have something that you might find interesting. Do you mind if I use one of your goblets? Please I... indulge me. And she kind of points to the table behind you. There's a cool. giant table of dinner supplies, and there's empty goblets all throughout. I walk over, I grab one of them, and I grab my water skin, and I put just the smallest amount of the water I had taken well uh, into it. Okay. And I tell her that a drink from this will grant you a vision. And she kind of looks at you and it was like, now, I don't do this often, take drinks from random men, but can I trust you? Make a persuasion check. You want to trip your balls off? I was going to say... Uh, <laughs> Frank will test it first. <laughs> in, in noticing her hesitation... I take it to my lips first and drink it and then hand it to her. Okay. She drinks it then and she seems to see she sees the same vision as you. And as she comes out, you can tell like her eyes focus again and looks down and goes the windmill. We have had so much trouble with that fucking windmill. It has no doors or windows. How are you supposed to get in a windmill with no doors or windows? Oh, is it stone? Oh no. my god. No, unfortunately. It's, it's everything we throw at it. It, we use magic. It just dissolves and disperses through the whole entire thing. <laughs> we try to scry. Our scryers cannot ins get inside. We need some kind of way to get inside or some kind of secret door we don't know of. But I can tell you that the Eye of the Moon Cult is behind that windmill, and it is one of their strongholds. Can you tell us a little bit more of? Yeah, the moon cult? I do not know much about them other than they are causing problems and they are consistently stealing our resources as we trade the veil. But I do know this water genasi you speak of. He is a, a friend of mine. I have worked with him in the past. We have actually adventured together. His name is Typhlo. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Tyflo. What a great wizard name. You'll meet him in the city of Zale. He resides actually in the lake behind the city.
Okay. Can I, can I do anything else for you? I'm just wondering, have you guys tried to approach the windmill from underneath? Yes, it's a uh, impossible. To say the least. We have dug like down. The least. <laughs> <laughs> we have dug down, and every time we dig down, it just keeps going. The windmill is actually underground as well. There is. We have talked about some kind of secret entrance. We know there is a half orc wizard who is able to get in. We've seen him go in. But we have no idea how he is able to pass through the barrier. Uh, half orc bastard. wizard, you say? Yes, his name is Z Ray. He is a terrible wizard. Killed many of our Eternal Flame members and boasted about it, you may say. He's very good with magic that stops people from moving. Hmm. Can I, I see your sword? Unfortunately, I did not use it inside. I do not want to ruin my own. Okay. I'll follow you outside. <laughs> Another day, my friends. Another day. I would like to ask of you all a great favor. Mm -hmm. Not you. I am saving... I am sending another trip of resources to the city of Zale in two days. I would like you guys to be personal escorts of them. There will also be Eternal Flame Guards, but the more the hands, the merrier. I will pay you back in reward. And I will have a favor owed of me to you. That is something I can agree to. Would you and the rest of your friends like to continue with this grill? This deal? I'm pretty smitten with uh, this person that I'm pretty much taking for a goddess, so whatever she yeah. wants me to do, I'm kind of <laughs> good with it. Frank uh, appreciates new friends. My two friends I, over there? No, I ask, a new friends. You as a new uh, friend. Yes. I ask, uh, uh, can, can I stay disguised? And I wave my hand back up and go back into the, the guard form. She smiles and kind of shakes her head and goes, I do not mind if you use it when you're traveling, but do not use it inside of Shoria. It will get you in trouble with the Eternal Flame, and I don't want you to be hurt before you go on a quest. That Sounds good. I, I, I mean, because it was just a flash and a wave back down. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Um, she looks over at you, Maro, and um, she actually ask if you know of the Oak Lore Academy. Excuse me, my friend. Do you know of the Oak Lore Academy? You look like a familiar face here. I, I slide off of Frunk's shoulder and burp very, very loudly, wipe my mouth, and then look at her suspiciously and say and ask her why she would think I knew of that place. I have worked closely with them in the past. And I work with their teachers and the Archmage there. And I know that they have banned very few students and that they, they actually have a description of a few of them because they don't want them to be anywhere near here. And you are fitting the description too well, my friend. I, I lie to her and tell her I'm the place. Make a deception check. <laughs> And I'm gonna make. Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Five. It does not work. She rolled an 18. Wait, doesn't he have drunken disadvantage? <laughs> yeah, he's got. Yeah, roll again. <laughs> it's a roll again. <laughs> Show me that one, bro. <laughs> Show me that run, bro. I'm gonna start calling her Chislev. Oh, look at that! He got a twenty. <laughs> Too bad you take the lower of that. No, no, it's advantage. You try it's to advantage. No, you try to lie to someone when you're drunk. It's easy. It is easy. <laughs> <laughs> she she smiles at you and goes, "Morrow Windtaker." <laughs> Nod my head shamefully. Are you part of this party here? 
<laughs> Are you joining these friends of yours on my task? I nod, and I say, why not? As long as you keep my secret. I will keep your secret. I do not bother into the academy's ordeals. I just like to keep register of that in my back of my mind now that I know that you're here. And now that you're helping me, it will go away like no problem at all. Um, I recommend you go check out the academy again if you can. They have some good knowledge you could use the uh, arcane arts. What secret is it? What secret... <laughs> Oh, would you like to know, my friend? You can join him as well. It's great knowledge for anybody who loves just to read a script or a book. Now, please, I must get back to work and figure out what supplies and Eternal Flame members I must send on this journey. In two days, meet at the eastern, at the northeastern gates, and we will be heading out to the city of Zale. Bye-bye, lady. Bye-bye. And, and she waves, and she kind of, like, shakes her fingers and kind of shakes her hands out and as she does that you notice she has tattoos around her biceps what do they look like lightning bolts yeah, I'd like to Word. hang out just a second longer <laughs> and ask if she would like to accompany me in seeing the bards tonight <laughs> <laughs> she smiles at you and says another time my friend I have much work to accomplish today Another to, no, no persuasion there? I will give you persuasion, absolutely. I don't know if you're trying to persuade her. Well, I'm trying to put on a little charm. Put a little charm on. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell what happened. She just smiles at you and just says, Another no day. Way. <laughs> As you are leading in to say this, you burp loudly in her face. I wasn't even had... drinking! <laughs> I didn't have a single drink! You can start burping without drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and she just leans back and says, have a good day. Alright. I, I fall over laughing at him. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, it's 10.30. Do you guys want to keep playing, or do you want to uh, finish the day out? Do you want to finish the day out, or do you want to keep going? It's up to you guys. I fight Morrow because he laughed at me. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> Battle Royale! Frank tries to be stealthy and take the sword. <laughs> what do you guys like to do? You guys want to go... If you want, I can time jump. You guys want to do that? Or do you want to mm -hmm. stop here? I don't know. I, think, uh, I, I mean, probably I, a good I place to stop. Yeah. My... my computer sound is actually completely fucked, so. I mean, next week I'll be on my desktop, but yeah, this is it's pretty shitty. I'm just trying to make it a two-hour session for everybody because I don't want anybody to be tired or anything like that. I know it was a lot of RP today, but it'll, it's, it'll be a quick two-hour session. So. I mean, I got yeah. to get hammered, though. Yeah. And so did everyone else, in a way. <laughs> yeah. You also got some cool... You got some, it was a shopping episode. <laughs> Well, that's what I, mean. I used a hammer. Oh, yes. They Question. <laughs> and he Flint is your hex blade, isn't he? He's, I don't know. Is he? Yes. <laughs> I did tell you about him. I, I know. <laughs> He's too good of a character. I mean, I'm bringing all my old characters. All right, so we're calling it? Yes. Okay. Morrow, good with that. I guess that's a yes. <laughs> that's that's wonderful. Yeah.